आफ्टरनून ऑल ऑफ यू टेकिंग फॉरवर्ड द एक्टिविटीज ऑफ अर्बन ऑक्टोबर एंड द एनवायरमेंटल इंफॉर्मेशन अवेयरनेस एंड कैपेसिटी बिल्डिंग प्रोग्राम सेंटर्स ऑफ स्कूल ऑफ प्लानिंग एंड आर्किटेक्चर एंड सुलभ इंटरनेशनल Uh, have organized this uh, virtual round table on uh, urban waste management and its implications on lifestyle for environment the uh, it, the theme of urban october has been at local to glow to glow global lifestyle for environment is another activity which will help us to formulate our practices and actions to take forward these actions to address environmental issues talking about lifestyle for environment our honorable prime minister last year in the cop mentioned lifestyle for environment is need of the hour to solve the challenge faced by our planet using human centric collective efforts <laughs> collective efforts and robust action that further sustainable development mission life borrows from the past operates in the present and focuses on the future reduce reuse and recycle are the concepts woven into our life the circular economy has been an integral part of our culture and lifestyle when technology and tradition mix the vision of life is taken forward our planet is one our efforts have been many one earth many efforts so with these thoughts the mission is taken forward today our honorable prime minister with the united nations secretary general antonio gutterres launched this scheme at the statue of unity in kevadia while launching the scheme mentioned mission life integrates the power of people for the safety of this earth and teaches them to utilize the resources for and better mission life makes the fight against climate change a democratic one in which everyone can contribute according to their ability mission life believes that environment can be protected by changing your lifestyle and mission life inspires us that we all can do a lot in our everyday life that will protect the environment with these thoughts and with this mission with which our entire country wants to address this global issue we at our humble level want to understand and make a fair awareness in this area i thank ministry of environment forest and climate change of which we have become a part as one of the environmental info environmental information awareness capacity building and livelihood program so under these aegis we have organized this and we have two very prom prominent speakers in this event who have worked for a very long time in this sector sulab international which is known to everyone were one of the pioneers in sanitation and health in hygiene niua has been one of the biggest arm of the government in taking forward the sanitation programs which all of us it has become one of a major activity of sanitation this the swachh bharat mission 
So with this brief introduction, I would now invite Ms. Paramita Dutta Day, who is a planner with over 25 years of experience in urban development. She heads the Resources and Waste Unit at National Institute of Urban Affairs and is the program lead for the Sustainable Cities and Water and Sanitation Program. She has peered, headed the program on capacity building in sanitation and waste management as part of Swachh Bharat Mission 1 for the Government of India. She has worked to bridge the gap between infrastructure policy and practice through the South Asian Urban Knowledge Hub. She has helped create innovation labs in urban wash solutions in Indian cities. Paramita has worked with several ministries in India and with internationally funded projects of UNIDO, ADP, UNDP, CEDA, USAID, World Bank, and lead, with leading links, think tanks like Center for Policy Research and Center for Science and Environment. She comes here to share her vast experience, first hand knowledge, and also, I would say, circular economy. And perhaps, is best suited or to someone who will tell us how we can leave, how and also she must have observed the lifestyle changes while taking forward these missions and how we should monitor whether we are progressing in this mission so with this i now invite you paramita to please make your presentation as well as your share your thoughts with us thank you Minak. thank you for sparing the time thank you so much minakshi ma'am uh, for it's like humbling <laughs> to get such a long introduction from you you have been my teacher and uh, my first job was at envis so this opportunity is very special for me uh, so coming to today's uh, topic of discussion let me take a step back and just to see where are we, uh, where is our country in terms of waste management. And given my experience of working with Swachh Bharat Mission, uh, there, there's, lot, there, there's a lot of discussion around technology. So I'll try to talk about what has been the contribution of people and how people, how, what has made it the Jan Andolan that we call it today. So beginning with a little bit of number crunching, uh, most of us are aware that India generates a lot of solid waste, which is about 1.4 lakhs tons per day. And out of which, thanks to the efforts of ULBs under the Swachh Bharat mission, almost 95% of it is collected. And we are able to process 70% of it. Uh, and we are still working a lot on it. The whole country is uh, geared up to work very fast on it. And we have to remediate a huge amount of waste that has been dumped in our dump sites. We have very few sanitary landfills. And our focus has been a lot on collection and somewhat on treatment, but remediation of dump sites and complete treatment is where we, we are faced with uh, the challenge that we are faced with right now. And uh, uh, we hear a lot about the fact that 70% of India hasn't been built yet. Even then, Today, we are collecting and recycling about 150 million tons of CND waste generated every year. And this is going to really grow fast. According to the Central Pollution Control Board, India generated more than 10, uh, 10 lakh tons of e-waste in the financial year 1920. And only 10% of this is getting collected annually. According to the latest data that I could gather from the Mahua website and some reports of the CPCB, it says that 1100, more than 1100 ULBs are practicing door-to-door -door collection, ULB as in urban local bodies, out of which more than 1400 are collecting waste segregated at the source. And if uh, there, there was an annual report uh, by the CPCB, which says that only Chhattisgarh is the only state that is processing all the waste it is generating. 
and there are very few states that have been able to reclaim their rights. Right? The work is on, and that's why SBM 2.0 uh, has that focus. So, in a nutshell, the challenges that is faced by a country today is that we have to remediate all our drum sites. We have to take care of the legacy waste. And in order to do all this, we need to create a lot of infrastructure, both at the centralized and the decentralized level, which has to be very context specific. Now, uh, if we look at, you know, what is it that is so special about Swachh Bharat Mission? I would say that it has made a paradigm shift in waste management from a conventional approach to something more proactive. Uh, so I'll take a few points to illustrate that. The conventional approach was that waste is considered as garbage. SBM has made us understand that it is a resource. Waste is a resource. There has been a lot of focus on awareness creation, IEC tools, posters, pamphlets. And this has been going on for many years. What is, uh, uh, what is it that SBM has done is it has focused on community mobilization and different forms of engagement. So it has used mid media, it has used digital media, it has used mass media. It, and this combination is what has made it the people's movement that it is today. In SBN, there was more focus on decentralized waste management uh, compared to more centralized efforts earlier. And the role of government has been looked at as a facilitator instead of a provider of services as was happening earlier. And it is also emphasizing on three hours that ma'am just spoke about. In fact, now we are talking about five hours and seven hours. It has focused a lot on segregation of waste at source. Earlier, that was not there. There has been a lot of effort in recognizing and uh, in making efforts in converging the informal rag pickers and the informal workers that are that are very, very important part of the system. So moving forward it is working a lot towards financially self-sustainable approaches of course we have a long way to go from here as well and therefore uh, that is why it is being called as a jan andolan it is this mission that has made a transformative change whether it is lacks of swachagris that are volunteering it has witnessed a lot of empowerment of women where you know thousands of rani mysteries have been empowered so Didis were recognized, particularly during the COVID time. It has broken gender stereotypes. It has broken silos between different ministries. It has empowered the ministries and people to work together. And it has, it has also facilitated a lot of convergence between different programs like Swachh Bharat Mission with the National Urban Livelihood Mission, National Urban Health Mission, and the like. I'm focusing more on urban because that's where I've been working. Of course, a lot has been has happened in the rural sector as well. So the journey of Swachhata Jan Andolan so far has been tremendous and very, very uh, remarkable. There have been, uh, you know, as per the data on the website of Mahua, it says that more than 20 crore citizens have been engaged directly. There have been various multimedia campaigns. Many, many brand ambassadors have been recognized. And there has been a lot of tailor-made and consistent interpersonal communication that has gone into making this program a success. Let me tell take you through the example of Chhattisgarh where they, where all the waste is getting, getting processed. They have got a lot of awards. What is it that makes Chhattisgarh so unique? It is a state centrally located uh, in our country and has more than 169 cities with an average population of 40,000 to 50,000. Initially, they focused a lot on centralized model, but after Seeing the success of Ambikapur, the state realized decentralization is the way to go. Uh, Chhattisgarh is one state where they have empowered 9,200 women SHG members who have been engaged in sanitation work, recognized as Swachhita Didis. And these Didis have been the pillars of the Swachhita model. And they, this is the reason why the state has been topping uh you know the charts in the last few such survey which is the annual survey of cleanliness and it is 
one of Asia's largest survey of this type. So what Chhattisgarh did is they did not engage in mass communication right from the start. They began from the household and because their belief uh, is that cleanliness starts from the household. So there they began with interpersonal communication. So the observation by the leaders there was that people don't read newspapers nowadays. So they tried to tap in WhatsApp. They estimated that there are 3,500 WhatsApp groups in Chhattisgarh, and each group had about 256 members. So you know it has a tremendous power to reach out to people through interpersonal means. So first they thought that okay, if we start doing these, uh, you know, making messages around Swachhata in WhatsApp, people will just not open their WhatsApp. So they started slowly through triggers like first, you know, sure, uh, the transfer orders, sanction orders, and relevant news which people would actually open their WhatsApp to and read. Then once people got a hang of this group and they started opening this group regularly, they slowly started trickling IC messages related to Swachhata. So people got involved and engaged and they became a part of it. So the, uh, the main, um, main message one can draw from Chhattisgarh example is that they focused on people talking to people and built the system around that and the, and they use social media to their greatest advantage they even not only created whatsapp group they created memes reels promos and this because india ha, has a huge uh, uh, youth population the demographic dividend as they call and they tapped into that. So what was the paradigm shift? The shift was from mass campaign to inter interpersonal campaign to behavior change, from city to community to ind individual profiling, shift from ULB official to opinion leader-based communication, and from conventional media to digital media. So in a nutshell, this was the paradigm shift demonstrated by Chhattisgarh. The state also created a pool of four, more than 4,000, to be specific, 4,100 public representatives. They had regular meetings with them, they had regular exposure visits, and these people became the force irrespective of party lines. Chhattisgarh currently has about 523 active social media handlers. Another interesting um, concept in Chhattisgarh was that of Mitan Club. Mitan in Chhattisgarh means friend. And every ULB has a Mitan club. And each Mitan club has about 10 members. So this was the whole workforce, the kind of soldiers of Swachhata that they created. And, and there was a scheme uh, regarding Mitan clubs, which was called Mitan Club Yojana. And about uh, 25,000 Indian rupees was given to each Mitan club. This was, it. This was regarding all government schemes. But they also put in SBM related schemes for this. So they utilize this fund very creatively and effectively. So the strategy was to create a pool of people, to get these whole soldiers of Swachhata Didis, and people recognize the Swachhata Didis because they came to them every day, they celebrated festivals together, the kids knew them. And that was the whole concept about the. Uh, I would say the most important part of success that Chhattisgarh is seeing today. There is another scheme called Swachhata Shringar Yojana, where the community toilet and uh, public toilets were uh, uh, upgraded, and that's how it became ODF Plus. Uh, and NGOs and SHGs were engaged by the government for this purpose. And some kind of seed funding given by the government, but it is the whole uh, uh, convergence of working uh, of NGOs and SSGs together that actually led to the success of the Swachhata Shringar Yojana. Then they also created a IEC plan and the plans were annual, reviewed every year uh, to tap into the young population that is the school going children they created a mascot called chota beam so chota beam is recognized not only by children but with, with adults alike so it was very popular 
so it was chota bhim that would go to schools explain the messages have activities then they created a lot of uh, ic material a coffee table book on swachhata didis were published and didis were facilitated for their work so in essence what did they do they were uh, according to uh, what their readers say they did samjhaya that is they uh, there were multiple information booklets pamphlets banners wordings etc that was created sikhaya for the education trainings workshops street plays camps were conducted and bhagidar banaya that is communication through social media in initiatives bcc activities competition citizens were made part of various schemes so samjhaya sikhaya and bhagidar banaya are the key to the success of uh, of this whole program and of course uh, then they also had a lot of competition they had uh, sbm poster competition genius market competition genius hotel hospital name it and they had a competition so if when we are looking at uh, you know trip advisor rating for a hotel if the hotel had a certificate saying that we are the cleanest hotel that automatically draws them towards it so it was a win win situation for both then they in ek swachhatam hotel swachhatam mohalla everybody was given certificates and this really encouraged people then they they did a lot of wall paintings that is where they use mass media so from interpersonal they gradually moved into mass media then kabar se jugar was another thing they they started you know stuff made from recycled products chairs tables tires were displayed in the public places like parks and that's how people actually you know saw things happening on ground zero waste wedding was something that was promoted by him though this was started initially by bangalore and uh, a very famous activist uh, and, uh, and doctor dr minakshi and dr vani murthy they actually had a video and it's a very beautiful video i'd like to share it with you uh, ma'am whenever uh, you feel like you can go through it well the whole concept was to create a green event and uh, chatisgarh took this on and encourage young people to go in for zero waste weddings then there was a lot of capacity continuous capacity building not one but continuous capacity buildings of self help groups then there was something called dg chinhari which is something like a dg locker that they created and where swachhata didis would uh, uh, take a selfie and log on to this app to give their attendance so that was one part this of course is being practiced in many states but what did chatisgarh do differently they did a convergence of scheme here so here when they are, they are taking the attendance their basic information would be there and the convergence of schemes like mukhya mantri swasthya yojana uh, where they could get diagnostic services consultations discounted medicines all this was merged into this dg chinhari concept that they created uh they now went one step further they have created a ic experience zone uh in uh, raipur in Pat near raipur it's a place called patan where it's a, a learning experiential learning kind of a place that anybody can go where good practices not only of chatisgarh but but from, from other parts of india are displayed and uh, people can actually go and it's something like um, uh, like we have this um, kidzania in delhi i don't know if some of you would have been there uh, where you, the kids are paid to uh, experience how is it that when you go to a bank or a, or a, or a court and how it works or even fun activities like dominos pizza something similar was it has been created in patan for ic experience related to swachhata so the key learnings from the first phase of sbm has been that ic and bcc are critical in raising awareness changing in terms of attitude and inculcating sustained engagement of swachhata there has been a lot of partnerships that have been created whether it's between ministries or between multilateral and bilateral organizations and government or between ngos and shgs and government so this is something that has been encouraged and this is what sbm 2.0 is also taking forward
the capacities of states ulbs also needs to be enhanced but in a more uh, uh, more uh, novel manner with newer techniques so that is being encouraged that has been a key learning so there is some kind of a framework a national behavior change communication framework for garbage free cities has been launched by uh, noa and it is available on the website this basically this framework basically talks about a streamlined approach for ic and bcc uh, ic as in information education communication and behavior change communication it talks about enhanced capacities of states and ulbs on new mediums of engagement it and it tells it is a guidance for states to take this whole uh, thing forward so the key mediums of engagement that this framework talks about is community mobilization strategic partnerships use of mid media mid media is something like traditional media like in in many states there are some traditional forms of uh, uh, communication for example in rajasthan puppet shows are very popular so that's an example of mid media so it has been observed that mid media has uh, has had a lot of impact in states where things have been successful so a lot of focus has been given on mid media you then of course digital media and lastly uh, mass media so accordingly the budgeting that is available for communication under sbm 2.0 has been tailor made in such a way that uh, those who are accessing the funds from the government 40% has to be through inter in the area of interpersonal communication 30% for mid media and 15% each for mass media and digital media this is based on all the evidence based uh, experience that has come out of sbm 1.0 so i would say that the life mission which is talking about transitioning from a throwaway culture to a circular economy is just the right this is just the right timing for it because sbm has already created all the base and it nudges people to the five r's refuse reduce recycle repurpose refurbish in their daily life so people are actually going to hang off it so this mission only tries to strengthen that and it also tries to leverage the strength of social media and nurture a global framework of pro planet people the p3s that is that it is trying to promulgate therefore this mission seeks to create an ecosystem that will reinforce and enable environmental friendly behaviors to be self sustainable so it expands from uh, the uh, the waste sector to other sectors like water transport food electricity to uh, to be uh, specific so just to give you a little examples of stuff that has already happened under sbm and even otherwise uh, an example is uh, uh, there is some uh, there is an app called pom pom trash to cash so this was created by a startup where you can sell anything through this remotely recyclable app and set a price per kg for it you just need to set up a request and a team from pom form will come to collect it then they send it off to waste uh, uh, industries that collect such waste and recycle and reuse of course the kabadi wala system is there but this is a little more formalized way of uh, doing it and they are integrating it with the kabadi wala then there is something called ecolect ecolect can help you when you do not know what you want to do with your old laptops or phones so this is a bangalore based uh, startup that launched this app with an aim to manage the rising e waste problem in our city then there is another startup oh, called no, encashia uh, it's, it's again a bangalore and, based and, uh, and uh, this team ties up with vendors who buy scrap and list the prices on the app and then they have a free doorstep service in the selected areas of bangalore all you need to do is to pre-book the service and choose the time for the available slots so these are some small small efforts that young people are doing and I am very motivated and I believe that this is the way to go and the life mission is only further enhancing and motivating people to 
take such ideas mm-hmm. forward. Traffic jam it is focusing on individual behaviors. It is talking about co-creating globally, and it is also talking about leveraging mm-hmm. lo- uh, local mm-hmm. cultures. So, with that said, uh, I'd like to stop here. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Paramita. It makes me feel strike while when the iron is hot. So the Swachh Bharat mission, as you said, has created this ecosystem. And uh, while you were uh, sharing your experiences and giving us the thing, you mentioned about more than five hours, uh, seven hours, I, if I got it right. Uh, could you just elaborate a little more on it, please? You are muted. You are muted. Oh, sorry, ma'am. I think I also uh, lost the connection in between. Uh, as you, you told me to mention about the seven hours, right, ma'am? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So first hour is that you have to refuse. That one has to refuse using stuff that is not required. For example, uh, when a single-use plastic is the best example that I can think of right now. Uh, that instead of going to a market without a thala just keep a thala in your purse a food there are a lot of foldable ones available so you're refusing to use single use plastic then is reduce so you're reducing the use of resources that are not required then re- reduce re- then you're reusing so uh, about reusing it has been in our culture already but we have been going the western way and we have forgotten so we, it, this uh, life mission is only encouraging us to go back to our roots. So reusing, uh, say for example, um, uh, a lot of old clothes that we generate in a house. Our grandmothers used to make these chatais out of it. You know, they used to make thin strands out of the borders of saris and make these beautiful doormats out of it. So that's reuse. That's an example of reuse. Then recycle. We, uh, we have been doing a lot of recycling, all these jars that we used to get, you know, those jam jars and um, bottles uh, through which a lot of food comes. So recycling it. And then refurbish. An example of refurbish is that, uh, you know, we have to design out ways. So an example that I can take right now is the mobile phones. So every day new models are coming in and we all get hooked on to buying new models. Okay, that's very nice because technology is improving every day and we need to, you know, we need, we need to get better. But what uh, is the whole circular economy debate is talking about is that you make it modular. For example, you have a mobile for which you need an upgrade. There can be certain parts of the mobile which can be changed for you to upgrade into a uh, more sophisticated uh, system. So these are some of the examples of all the R that we have spoken of all, all the R. If I've missed anything, I'm even reminding me. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much uh, uh, for this uh, very informative. And also, since you have been part and parcel and have been uh, watching this grow uh, right from, as you said, there this element of interpersonal was very important in the Chhattisgarh example, and that's where the mission life is also trying to, uh, you know, in the, what to say, nudge people that if people are the ones who will bring the change. And no wonder the Chhattisgarh example, because it started with the people, it has been one of the most successful examples. Thank you very much. Uh, I see Dr. Embreen Mazumdar. Thank you, sir, for taking out your time and uh, agreeing to participate in this virtual roundtable. Uh, Dr. N.B., if I may, uh, Dr. N.B. Majumdar is an international waste management expert. He has been involved with waste management and on-site sanitation since three and a half decades in India and other countries. Currently, he is the honorable, honorary chairman of the International Academy of Environmental Sanitation and Public Health 
and he joined Sulab International so Social Service Organization as Honorary Director in April 2016. He retired from H Hatko in the year 2005 as head of the waste management cell and chief of projects involved with financing infrastructure projects. He has worked as chief technical officer and chief technical advisor at ILFS Environmental Infrastructure and Services Limited before that. During this time, very uh, important uh, areas which he has been involved with and has been advising and has been also instrumental in bringing about the change is in the composting, aerobic windrow, static pile, vermi composting, waste to energy by conversion of the RDF to electric power. And during this period, the first project for management of CND waste in India was developed and installed in Delhi. Simultaneously, he handled several multi-country assignments by being consultant with the ADB, Asian Development Plan, Global Environmental Sustainability Japan, and then he worked with Peru. He has worked with Sulab International Institute of Technical Research, where during this uh, in his period, public toilets linked with biogas. He was instrumental in bringing DWARPs into India. He has worked as consultant to the World Health Organization in China and has been a consultant with Rotary International. He was chairman of the expert con con committee for standardization of RDF and has been a member of technology evaluation committee of solid and liquid waste and water supply set by MAUA in October 2018. He was also chairman of the expert committee of MAUA for preparing manual for municipal solid waste management. Uh, also, he was member to the Interministerial Task Force on Integrated Plant Nutrient Management Using City Compost. So his ex with this, there has been a long list of publications and documents which he has authored. With this, sir, uh, we would like to hear from you with your vast experience in almost all dimensions of waste management and today, our Honorable Prime Minister has launched the life uh, mission at Evadia in Gujarat. At EIACP, we felt this is the time and when we have to also enlighten ourselves and also empower ourselves to take forward this mission because this has in it a component of transforming us to pro-planet, not that we are we, we may be doing it in small efforts, but to make it much more meaningful, much more focused. So with this, I would uh, request you to please share your views and your insights. Thank you, sir, for taking out. So you're mute, uh, muted, actually, if you can unmute yourself. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes, sir. OK, so it's a great pleasure to be here. And uh, you see, I'm really grateful uh, for the organizers to give me this opportunity of interacting with all of you. And I have had, you know, uh, old links with uh, SPA as well. Uh, possibly we would have met somewhere. When uh, Professor Maitra was uh, the director, and even before that, since then, I think since uh, 2000, oh, no, I think 19. 97, 8 or so, I used to go to give lectures and interact with your students and postgraduate students since a long time. And uh, I see Paramita Ji from NIUA. With NIUA also, I had a very long association. Even uh, the present director is long well known to me, or Chetan, who was the earlier director. So this is all a known word. It was for a very old person, uh, many things come back into a closed group. Anyway, so uh, as you have mentioned that uh, I've had a bit of experience, and I find that actually uh, the world is becoming more and more competitive. 
particularly with respect to availability of and access to natural resources. This, this is true for uh, you know, materials, this is true for energy, this is true for infrastructure, for everything. So we have to brace for greater and greater uh, competition. And on the one hand, the population is increasing. On the other hand, aspirations of people, whether in uh, industrialized countries or in developing countries, it's increasing day by day. Consumerism is increasing. So that is another factor which is really getting in, particularly with respect to uh, creation of waste and waste of different types. You see, earlier when I had started, let's say, my credit career, uh, the waste used to be much simpler. Today, it's much more complex with a lot more different, different kinds of materials. For example, the multi-layer plastics. The multi-layer, you know, uh, combo of plastics and metal. You have carbon fiber to chip in. So everywhere you have challenges. Now creation of material is one thing. I have 20 minutes, right? Up to 3.30. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Give that your time. You can take uh, little extra also. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So what's happening? You see, while developing the products, products, uh, the scientists, the technologists, the, the commercial, the whole commercial world, they are very, very enthusiastic. A lot of investment is coming in, in development of new products and attracting us so that we could get into the use of particular, uh, you know, materials. So these are mostly combo materials. You see, uh, uh, on this day, if you look around you, you would find very, very few pure material of any one kind. They are all combo of different kinds. Even plastic, there are hundreds of different kinds of plastics and combinations of thereof. So therefore, the situation is pretty equal. Now, when it comes to waste, it is just the opposite. Developing a product, there is a huge interest, there is a huge enthusiasm because there is huge money also. But when we come down to the end of life of these things, the interest wanes, there is very little money. So finally, we kind of, we try to say, uh, this is there is also some kind of gold, uh, green gold, brown gold, and so on. But actually, there are uh, difficulties. As uh, Minakshi ji read out my CV, you see, I have had the uh, chance to do financing for more than a decade, both uh, debt as well as equity financing. Then I had uh, more than 11 years on the ground with waste management dirtying my hand and feet and being there in front of uh, lakhs of tons of waste on huge compost plants, dump sites, including our great Gazipur, the symbol of mismanagement. I've been seeing Gazipur since 1996. That is when I had visited it long time uh, and first time. Anyway, so what do we do? Now, in this short time, what uh, I have thought is, I will flag certain uh, issues which are, uh, to my mind, which are more frequent or more challenging at this point of time. The first thing which comes to my mind is, uh, is the plastic waste, which is being debated, I think, one of the most at this point of time. Right. Now, if we want to see plastic waste and the gravity that it's putting before us, I would suggest that uh, we just look at two areas. One is the dump sites like Gajipur. Okay, so Gajipur today has more than 14 million tons of waste, and out of that, maybe about five six percent could be plastic. Maybe a little less because. A lot of it is ramaged and you know, but it is there. And if you want plastic in a slightly more purer, purer stage, you have to look at the marine data. 
then marine litter has become such a big reality you know so uh, the example of the gpgp is being given every time gpgp is the great pacific garbage patch it is 1.6 million square kilometers which is three times three times the size of spain imagine what you do with that and it's not only flooding it is much of it has sunk also it has you know impacted negatively the marine life the aquatic marine life the living marine life everywhere but one you know what what can we do in this situation we cannot just come out of plastic because plastic is such a great material it has come out after a lot of research and lot of investment and it is extremely useful for the mankind and for others as well but the problem is when the end of life or the waste plastic is just rejected in the most irresponsible manner and is not taken up by those who are supposed to take care of it i mean the local bodies you see if we look at our constitution in the 12th schedule it is very clearly mentioned that the local bodies are mandated with management of the waste material whether it is municipal solid waste or some other kinds of waste so it is there in the 12th schedule so we have to see how the citizens and the local bodies can come together now when i was just joining in i was hearing arunita ji was mentioning a lot of examples of what we as citizens can do how we can mitigate the problems in our own small way that is also very very necessary but i would like to mention here that the ulbs whether it is a municipal corporation or a small gram panchayat they have a huge responsibility and without them acting properly the problem cannot be solved right so i can just mention a simple um, two two pronged mantra very simple but unfortunately we are not doing that also number one don't litter i mean each if us each of us decide that we won't litter the situation would be completely different the second is whatever waste we generate let us segregate in a let us store in a segregated manner so two mantras only don't litter and segregated storage that's all the rest has to be done by the local body of course there are many citizens many people who are enthusiastic about it i myself had done a lot uh, long back of course uh, for, for about two years from my home i was in a first floor apartment and nothing went out of my apartment except the milk pouches and the bulbs electric bulbs and of course the batteries because i could not find anything more useful about it the paper we used we recycled in by way of paper mache the the uh, biodegradable waste we composted and composted in window sills because we we were living in a first floor apartment we didn't have access to any ground right and we were successful we could do that at that point of time i am talking of early 80s at that point of time the plastic waste recycling etc were not really happening very effectively so we had to just you know give it after washing and all we uh, you know every month we used to tie them up and then give it out so it is possible and the petri mesh also i still have one or two examples in my household where with the help of some kitchen where we used to do things mold different kinds of uh, you know a small statue or something i mean it's your own so it can be done but 
in a broader manner, the municipality has to come in. Otherwise, it cannot happen. Now, coming back to plastic waste, you see, there is a low-hanging fruit. That is, it can be used. I mean, the, the most, uh, you know, Oh, 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 the single use plastic Thank you. that can be very well used in our laptop roads. And the Central Pollution Control Board of India had, in the year 2006, uh, published a guideline. So that guideline had two very clear procedures as to how it can be used. Simple procedures. One is melt the plastic along with the tar. Second, melt the plastic and put the aggregate, that is the chips, which go into making of the road with that molten plastic and then go ahead with the making of black top road, just as that. This simple step makes the road much more durable because, you see, the black top roads are water-bound macadam. That is the main, main constituent. So when the rain falls, what happens? The inside of the road, once the water percolates, percolates, it becomes weak and the road, you know, breaks. And we have potholes. And we have all that, you know, Allah Gulla about uh, mismanagement and all that. That can be to a great, great extent rectified if the same city's plastic waste could be used in making its own roads or repairing its own roads. Nothing difficult, it can be done. Right? So this is a simple way to do. The other way of uh, you know, uh, conversion of plastic into useful product is by thermal waste. So it can be converted into liquid fuel. Now, normally it is thought that it is some kind of a diesel. Actually, it is you know, a mix of different liquid hydrocarbons. And you cannot use that crude material as such you cannot use it in a automobile for example you can at best you can you can use it in a in a factory or in a you know in a, you know just for burning something okay so for actually making it useful what is required is fractionation now fractionation cannot be done in a small scale so two ways could be there one is that large number of small projects are there, let's say a 500 kg to 1 ton uh, projects of conversion into liquid fuel and there is one special uh, fractionation plant in that city or between 10 cities for example which fractionates that crude oil and then the fractions that are available that can be used for different purposes otherwise in small scale it's just not possible right Another uh, waste which is usually being you know, neglected at this point of time is construction and demolition waste. Now, construction and demolition waste uh, has come rather late in this country. In the, in the rule of 2000, it was not even mentioned, just two, two, three lines. But in the year 2016, a new rule has come up. And we had in between, as you had, uh, as uh, Dr. Dhote had uh, mentioned, between 2019 and 2009 to 2014, we had developed this technology in a place called Burari in Delhi. And we first developed the dry process and then the wet process because this was a private company and we had to make it commercially viable. Right? So to make it commercially viable, we had to see which product was actually saleable in the market. You see, the normal classical GSB, ground sub-base for making roads, it was not really getting sold. So therefore, ultimately, we uh, came into the manufactured sand and we could get a good, good market for that. And even we set up a plant for RMC in our plant, inside the plant, ready mix concrete. And then there was good revenue accrual from that. That was the only plant. Composting, we don't get a positive revenue rate. Uh, accrual. It's very difficult, very difficult. And that's why the government has come up with this 1500 rupees per, per ton of compost for, uh, you know, supporting as a price support system. But CND ways, it can be done. So, 
CND waste should be properly managed. Now, its storage, collection, and processing in the rule itself, lots of things have been mentioned. And there is manual also where it is mentioned. We have published the solid waste management manual also, wherein it is also given. So I would request each and every ULB to come forward and use this, which, uh, which is over everything else, is our lack of planning capability. Now, if we look at the waste management scenario, I think, I mean, that strikes me the most. Planning capability is lacking, and it's not easy. You see, we go through tender. Any government, any public sector thing, tender has to have, has to come. So therefore, we have to have people who can prepare good tenders. And who can prepare good tenders? Who have a good, good grip on this subject. And for that, good training is also required. And that is also one of the issues, good training. You see, if we look at the large number of training programs which is happening, recently I was in a conference where it was mentioned that uh, such training programs, even by the top uh, institutions, top training institutions of this country, including NIUA, Kila, Hyderabad's engineering staff college, and so on. So they were facing, number one, financing issue or funding issue. Number two, attendance issue. Imagine. So that means training is there, but you don't get attendees. Why? So we have to think. In fact, I had mentioned in that uh, conference also that it's a serious issue and the authorities should think over it very seriously as to why these training programs are not really happening properly. On the other hand, I see, you know, we get, I get also emails in which training programs, four day training programs, 3,35,000, okay, it's management kind of. But much more essential, which is essential to our lives, to our well being, there people are not interested. So we have to really very seriously think about it and try to improve the quality of training in a way that it is more hands-on job and it is really impactful. So that a person who, when after getting the training, when the person returns to one's department or you know, academia, his or her peers and seniors feel that yes, there is a difference in this guy. So he can perform better, he has a better understanding, and he has really uh, dirtied his hand and known actually as to what is happening in the West Panama. So we have to really think about those points as well. And uh, of course, I've taken a lot of time. I would again uh, like to mention about uh, the circularity of which we are debating everywhere. Now, circularity is very important is critical or even we can call it mission critical for our survival for our survival if we don't really go for secular economy we would get submerged in not only waste but in deficit of water in deficit of so many other natural resources and ultimately possibly we will destroy ourselves so the circularity in economy in in our approach should be the key. And uh, I was talking about a tender. You see, one thing every time comes to my mind again and again is that, <clears throat> you see, when judging a tender, we look at NPV, the net present value of the cost. We compare them. In my very, very, uh, you know, strong opinion, I think the thing should be uh, life cycle cost and not the NPV. If the life cycle cost is taken, because whenever I mention anything you know, uh, for any tender or for any project, my simple formula is don't look at the day of the commissioning. Look at the day your concession agreement is going to end. And you have to you have to you know get back I mean hand over the asset back to the municipality or to whoever. Look at that day. 
if it is 15 years, 20 years, if we keep that in our mind, it's a completely different ball game. So the tender, the people who um, prepare the tender, they should know exactly. For example, uh, from my own uh, practical experience, I'm telling you, for a waste management project, in the seventh to eighth year, you will require a major replacement and repair. Again, in the 11th, 12th year, you would again require it. In the 15th, 16th year, you will again require it. And in the meantime, around 10 to 12 years, the technology would have increased, it would have changed. So your technology would, have been, would become less competitive. That is again a nightmare. So a tender should have all these points ingrained into this. Then only the projects will be successful. Thank you very much. I have taken, I think, about 12 minutes more. Okay. No, thank you, sir. Uh, because the formal systems that are there, how to tweak them to incorporate uh, these aspects of circularity as well as uh, making them more uh, effective. I think you have managed to elaborate on that and while you were speaking, uh, when you uh, were talking about training especially, that when a person goes for a training and comes back, the organization should feel. So our training should also include, because if we are talking, I mean, we are we are traversing the path from where the nation, I mean, we when we had the Earth Summit, we talked about uh, think globally, act locally. Now we are saying act local to go global. So it's like it, it, it has to be back and forth. I mean, uh, we are wanting to nudge the people in the lifestyle mission because people are party to this entire thing. It affects us. The impacts of mismanagement of waste is impacting people. So this mission will have to and put everyone into action. It's not that. Just because it's, it is centered on lifestyle, the responsibility of ULBs or the things are less. It is equally important. I think you did flag that. But it is everyone, it's every link in the chain has to be active. And then that, because there are, uh, with everything which uh, Paramita in her play, it's everybody has something to contribute to the mission to make the mission successful. So leaving no one behind is a term that is used. Leaving no one's inputs behind. I think with that spirit, this mission is uh, would be able to, I mean, the, the vision that our prime minister and the vision, I mean, this is something which was there in our culture. We have to read, we have to bring it back. You know, it's, it's something that is, lie it has gone back we have to bring it to the forefront because we will be impacted immensely by it and that is something which as eiacp center we have to not only make, make people aware we have to practice and we have to take it forward in whichever way it so that we can reach our goals so with this, since uh, we have been a little above time, if anyone has a quick reaction, I see uh, our national program, uh, Sir, Mr. Rajneesh, and many people from the Envis Secretariat very much there. So if there, anybody has anything to say, uh, I would uh, we would be happy just for a, a minute or two before I formally close the session. Any quick, uh, I think there is, uh, the mic is mute. Anyone? If not, then I would now uh, thank uh, Dr. Envy Majumdar, Paramita Dev for uh, giving us the insights from your vast experience and the schemes that you have been involved. I take this opportunity to thank Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change and the Envis Secretariat for uh, giving us this opportunity to have this interaction and participate 
in this mission they're taking forward. Thank you all. All the participants are enlisting to be part. Thank you very much. Thank <clears throat> you.